All right, Jeremy is here to show us the T3 electric trike. Uh, you can see for this guy, one of your big snags is the rear rack mounting. Um, on this bike, there are no bosses on the seat stays for mounting a rack, so we're using P-clamps. I'll show you what that looks like. This is one of the bikes where you can use the regular rack struts. You don't need extra long rack struts, but you do need these P-clamps. Uh, we stock these. You could also get them from any hardware store. I think these are like three-quarter inch. And they uh, fit around the seat stays and allow you to through bolt the end of the rack struts. Um, if we're using a black metal case battery like this one we'll use our two tiered rack but if we're using a blue 9 or 20 amp hour bag battery soft pack battery we'll usually use an axiom journey rack and you'll do the same thing you'll use p clamps and regular length rack struts with that the other things that you'll do on this bike for the motor it's usually handy to use two of these thin nine tenths of a millimeter freewheel shims. I'll show you that. We're using a 48 volt rear performance geared kit on this bike and along with it we're using an eight speed freewheel. The derailleur is kind of wide on the inner plates so in order to make it fit properly we add those two freewheel shims and that keeps the derailleur from scraping on the motor while you're running it. We also use our favorite Topeak bar extender and extra long M4 by 30 millimeter screws to mount the screen to it. And then we like to take some of our grips here, cut the top off of the right hand grip where the throttle goes on and use a regular bar plug in it. I'll show you what that looks like. You can do this with our grips, you can do it with whichever grips you happen to have laying around. Um, over here, we've got the throttle mounted on top of a half-height grip, which lets you keep this grip shifter on there, and then a bar plug in the end to finish the end. You can see on the left-hand side, we're just using a regular half-length grip. You could also use the grips that come with this bike. Uh, they're these sort of squishy gray guys. They don't look as great. In my opinion, they don't match as well, um, but you can cut the ends off of those and use them in the same way that we're doing that. You need two half-length grips, though, because you have a twist grip shifter on both sides. Here you can see the Topeak bar extender mounted, and you see that we've got a locking e-brake lever on both sides, even though this is a performance bike kit where you can substitute in those locking parking levers for you. For the pedal assist, for the kit, we usually will supply this universal left hand mount pedal assist sensor and this split disc. This lets you install the pedal assist sensor without removing the cranks or the bottom bracket just by popping that disc in place afterwards. We have a separate video on installing the left hand sensor and the split disc but the sensor just sticks on with a self-adhesive back and zip ties down to the mast for the front derailleur there. Very easy install. For a more finished install in the shop, we like to mount a left-hand TDH sensor. You have to drill and tap the frame for an M5 screw in order to directly mount this sensor because there's not enough room on the right hand side for your normal mounting. So you have to do this direct mount, left hand. And to give you a slightly better fit, we use our smaller seven magnet disc instead of the large split disc. Since we're removing the bottom bracket and the cranks and everything, it's not too much trouble. We have a document showing you how to prepare all this. We can tell you the parts already finished. Uh, and there's a video showing how to install these sensors if you want to do it. If you're going that route, that sensor comes with an extra long 
120 centimeter long cable which will reach all the way back to the controller on its own. If you're using the regular sensor from the kit that's a little easier to install, you'll want a pedal assist extension. If you're really tall and you got the boom cranked out a long way, you may want to use two extensions depending on how you run the cable. Those cables will run down along the boom tube following the chain guide. The outriggers will hold the brake, throttle, and screen cables nicely. Then when you come down here to the end under the seat, we've got the wires bundled up nicely. And then the controller is hidden right here on the seat bracket in the end. And that gives you a nice finished look for the controller with it screwed down tightly on the seat frame. And then the motor cables running down along the chain stays there nice and safe out of the way of the chain and the battery cables running up the rack legs. Then when you're all done you've got the electric T3. If you have any questions let us know. We can send you our notes on how to assemble this and some more details if you have any questions. Thank you.